may as well not even be there. It doesn't matter. We don't care about that point. We care about the function value, the y value, as we approach the x value. So if this does not equal that, does that exist? No. Can you put Danny? You can really see it though, can't you? If the, if the lines don't match up, it's not there. It's not going to happen. The, the limit doesn't exist. Let's do one more and we'll call it good on this stuff. Uh, here we go. Okay, last picture, last picture for us. I want you to try to do that one completely on your own, okay? This is h of x. I want you to find the limit of h of x as x approaches 5 from the right. I want you to find the limit of h of x as x approaches 5 from the left. And then I want you to determine whether or not that limit exists at x equals 5. Do you, do you follow the questions? Okay, go ahead and do that. See what you get. See if we did it right. Okay. So the limit of, of our function as we're going from the right, as we're going from the left, and then we're going to compare those numbers. So from the right means from the positive, or from the more positive, I should say, because sometimes we're going positive. From the left means uh, from the less positive or negative, whatever your case may be. So from the right, from the left. From the right, what is the y value as your x value approaches 5? What are you getting towards? Three. Okay. Well, what about that one? Does the function actually approach that? Approach it. See, that's the difference. We don't care what it is at that number. We care what's approaching as we're getting close to that number. You see the difference, right? Okay, so you all got how much? Three. Perfect. Let's do it from the left. From the left, what's the, the y value getting towards as your x value is getting towards 5? Three. Good. Is the right side limit the same as the left side limit? Yes. yes. Does the limit exist? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah, why? Don't care what happens at that point. Just because this point doesn't fill in that hole, it doesn't matter. As long as the function's value is going to the same exact spot from both sides, do we care what happens when we get there? No. no. We don't care about that. We care about this. That limit is three. How many people have a better idea about the idea of a limit right now? So given a, a graph, you can do this? OK, cool. Hey. Let's talk about that for a second. What's the one number you can't plug into that? Zero. What would happen if we discovered what, what the function does as we approach zero? Isn't that an interesting question? It's kind of cool, kind of interesting. What happens to the function as we get close and close to that? Let's talk about that for a second. Now, in order to talk about that, we need limits. What's the function do as we approach that? So just like we did over here, we're going to talk about a right-sided and a left-sided limit. But we're going to do it with a table. Now, what number are we approaching? I'm sorry, what was it? Zero. Where's the zero go on our table? To the left, to the right, or in the middle? Because no. that's the number we're trying to get to. Are we ever going to be able to get to the zero? 
Now we can't plug it in because then it's undefined. That would be a problem. So now let's pick some numbers that are getting close to zero from the right. Let's start at like, oh, I don't know, 0.5, and we'll work our way down. So 0.5, is 0.5 supposed to go here or here? The right or the left? Right. right, right, right. So 0.5, all right. 0.01 and 0.001. Would you agree those are numbers that are pretty close to zero? Uh, what are the numbers to the left of zero? What do you want to use? The same ones with negative. Okay, good. They have to be negative, though, because they're to the left of zero. So negative 0.5, that'll work. And negative 0 0.01 and negative 0 0.001. So let, let's use those numbers. Again, left side people, do the left side. Right side people, do the right side. These ones should be a little bit easier to plug in, yeah? By the way, this is going a little bit out of the scope of this section at this point. We're talking about something a little ahead of time. Uh, it's interesting to me, so we're, we're covering this right now. It will come back at us uh, later on, right? But I, I'd like to make sure you see it in limits at least once or twice before we get to that section. So if you take 1 and you divide by 0.5, I'm hoping that you got 2. Did you get 2? And over here, you probably got, well, I'm going to be a genius about that, negative 2. Did you get negative 2? No. Would you say, hope so? No. Okay, good. Whew. I scared myself for a second. So, 2 and negative 2. Very good. Uh, now, how about 0 0.01? If you divide 1 by 0 0.01, you should get, let's see, move the decimal place. You should get 100. 100. And I'm going to hope this is negative 100. Yes? yes? If you divide by 0 0.001, that's, let's see, one, two, three decimal places. You're just dividing one by decimal places there, and you did one. That should be. Let's do a little critical thinking here, all right? First question is Is this number getting bigger or smaller as we're approaching zero from the right? Is it ever going to stop getting bigger? 1 divided by 0.000001 is going to be really, 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 really big, right? And it's going to be positive. How about this way? Is it getting bigger or smaller? smaller. Way smaller. And it's never going to stop getting smaller. It's not going to a certain number. Now, first, the second question is, does the limit exist? Are they going to the same exact number? No, in fact, as we're going from the right, where would you say this is going? Because if you draw the picture, it's going like, like that. It's going where? Infinity. Infinity. If you divide by smaller and smaller numbers that are approaching zero, keep dividing by 0. .00000 forever in the little one, you're going to get really, really huge numbers, right? And you can keep getting smaller and smaller still. So what we would say is the limit as x approaches zero from the right of our function, which is 1 over x, is positive infinity. And you, don't, you technically don't have to put the plus because infinity without that plus still means positive infinity, but I want to show the difference. Limit as you approach, I'm sorry, as x approaches 0 from the left is, what would you say that would be? Is negative infinity the same thing as positive infinity? So limit clearly doesn't exist. In fact, you can see this from the graph. If you graph 1 over x, your calculator or whatever you, you graph it on something like this. That's it. You can see as we get towards 0, it's skyrocketing. As we get towards 0, it's really going into an a, abyss, right? So it's, it's not going to be the same thing. But this leads us to a couple ideas. Whenever we have a limit, I'll write this out for you. If you have a limit, as x approaches a from either the right or the left of some function, and you figure out that it's positive or negative infinity, 
I'll say it again. If you are approaching a number, right, from either the right or from the left, and it's going to infinity, either positive or negative, what that does for you is it gives you an, what's this thing called? Gives you an asymptote. Gives you an asymptote. Because you say, okay, if we're going towards infinity, as we're reaching, as, as if my y value is going to infinity, as my x value reaches a number, that means I have to be shooting up. If my y value is going to negative infinity, as I reach a certain number, that means I have to be shooting down. So one of those cases, it's going to be some sort of asymptote. You're never going to actually get to that point. You can't. You can't. So uh, there are really four cases. Uh, I'll draw them over there so that we see them. Four cases of, of asymptotes and their relationships to their limits. So the one case is what happens if we approach A from the right and we're going to positive infinity. Another case would be what happens if we approach A from the right and we go to negative infinity. Another case would be, well, what would happen if we went, if we did the both rights, right, from the right. If we went to A from the left and went to positive infinity. Or what would happen if we went to A from the left and it gave us negative infinity? Would you agree those are all four permutations, all four cases of, of this? In either case, we just talked about this, if your function is going to positive or negative infinity, when x is going to A from the left or the right, you're going to have an asymptote. So every one of these is going to be an asymptote. Well, that's the worst asymptote I've ever drawn. diagnose what these things would do. Uh, I want you to really think about what these limits should do to our, our function here, okay? Now, if I say x is approaching a from the right, should I start <coughs> here or start this way? Am I going <coughs> this way, option one, or this way, option two? <coughs> option one. So if the function is approaching a from the right and it goes to positive infinity, should I be going up or should I be going down? So this would be this type of graph. It can do whatever it wants over here. No problem, but when it gets to here, it shoots up. This is not going to be, this isn't going to be told by our limit as we approach A, all right? It's, it has nothing to do with it. It's what happens as we get close to A. It's going to be going towards positive four. Let's, let's talk about this one. Now, I know we were just coming from the right-hand side. This one's going to be going, well, not up, not positive four. It's going to be going down, negative infinity. Do whatever you want over here, but it's going to drop. It's going to be